Pen gì có thể đó là đại dịch hoặc vị trí chống của SCOTUS hoặc chính cuộc bầu cử, nhưng tôi nghĩ tại một thời điểm nào đó tất cả chúng ta đều ước mình có thể quay trở lại. Quay lại cuộc sống của đồ pha cà phê Venti không béo, cắt sửa móng tay hàng tuần, trang phục hàng hiệu, phương tiện giao thông công cộng. Đó là cuộc sống của tôi. Tôi đã có một căn hộ đầy phong cách ở trung tâm thành phố New Orleans có giá quá cao nhưng đáng giá. Tôi thức dậy vào cùng một giờ mỗi ngày để đến phòng tập thể dục sau đó tạo kiểu cho mái tóc dài vàng hoe của mình một cách hoàn hảo. Sau đó, tôi chọn một bộ trang phục hoàn hảo, đi bộ đến Starbucks rồi băng qua ngân hàng nơi tôi làm nhân viên cho vay. Tôi yêu công việc của mình, tất cả đều được tổ chức và có trật tự và văn phòng của tôi có thiết kế thẩm mỹ hoàn hảo. Nó giống như kim đồng hồ và tôi yêu cuộc sống của mình. Cho đến khi mọi thứ thay đổi. Đó là ngày bầu cử, vì vậy tôi mặc một chiếc váy trắng vừa vặn và đi giày cao gót màu đỏ. Tôi đã thực hiện nghĩa vụ công dân của mình bằng cách bỏ phiếu và đăng một bức ảnh tự chụp lên Instagram với nhãn dán tôi đã bỏ phiếu. Tất nhiên tôi đã bỏ phiếu cho chăm, tôi muốn tiền của tôi trong tài khoản ngân hàng của tôi. Nơi nó thuộc về, không bị đánh thuế cao quá mức. Văn phòng ồn ào náo nhiệt chúng tôi đã không hoàn thành nhiều việc tôi nhớ mình đã nghĩ rằng chúng ta có thể bù đắp vào ngày mai. Thật là buồn cười, tôi đã kiểm tra các cuộc thăm dò ý kiến và có vẻ như Trump đã giành chiến thắng và một cuộc chiến long trời lở đất. Tôi bắt đầu rời văn phòng thì nghe thấy một tiếng nổ vang xa. Nó khiến tôi phải dừng lại, tôi hỏi một đồng nghiệp, bạn có nghe thấy điều đó không? Nghe những gì cô ấy nói, hồ, không có gì tôi nghĩ tôi đã nghe thấy gì đó, tôi nói, với một làn sóng bác bỏ. Tôi đi về phía thang máy khi tôi không chỉ nghe thấy một tiếng nổ tôi còn cảm thấy nó. Toàn bộ tòa nhà rung chuyển và chuông báo động bắt đầu vang lên. Tôi nhấn nút liên tục, hy vọng nó sẽ đến nhanh hơn, nhưng thang máy dừng lại khi chuông báo động vang lên. Tôi biết nếu tôi có thể đến phía tây của tòa nhà, có một cầu thang hiếm khi được sử dụng dễ tiếp cận hơn, vì vậy tôi chạy ngược chiều đám đông, nghe thấy tiếng nổ tiếng la hét và kính vỡ. Đây có phải là một cuộc tấn công khủng bố? Tôi tự hỏi khi chạy nhanh ra cửa. Tôi chạy xuống cầu thang nhưng khi lên đến tầng 2 thì gặp một nhóm người. Có thể là cướp cuộc bay lên cầu thang và cầm súng, la hét. Một trong số họ vung súng vào mặt tôi khi chạy ngang qua, khiến tôi khuỵu xuống, nơi tôi có thể nhìn thấy những giọt máu rơi trên mặt. Tôi nhấc một bàn tay run rẩy lên để đánh giá mức độ tổn thương, tôi không thể biết mình bị thương nặng như thế nào nhưng tôi biết mình cần phải ra ngoài. Tôi đứng dậy khi một vụ nổ lớn khác làm rung chuyển tòa nhà. Cắt điện, tôi lảo đảo xuống cầu thang nhưng lại bị ngã khi xuống tới đáy. Tôi thấy mọi người bị bắn, ăn cắp tiền từ sổ đăng ký, nó hoàn toàn hỗn loạn. Từ đằng sau tôi nghe thấy, đây, đi với tôi. Tôi quay lại, vừa khóc vừa nhìn thấy một người đàn ông da đen cao lớn mặc quần chở hàng và áo phông đen vừa vặn. Anh ta đội một chiếc mũ lưỡi chai ngược với khẩu súng trường đeo ngang ngực. Anh ấy trông không giống như một người an toàn, nhưng tôi không có lựa chọn nào khác vì vậy tôi đã nắm lấy tay anh ấy. Chúng tôi chạy ra cửa sau và tôi kêu lên, chuyện gì đang xảy ra vậy? Anh ấy không trả lời, anh ấy nhìn xung quanh một cách tuyệt vọng rồi lại kéo tay tôi. Ta ha ta, đúng, anh ta nói, nhìn vào một chiếc xe máy. Không, tôi nói chắc nịch, tôi không hiểu chuyện đó. Đây là tất cả quá nhiều. Ngày sau đó, cửa hàng Starbucks mà tôi đến mỗi buổi sáng đã bùng cháy. Người đàn ông đào mắt và đưa cho tôi một chiếc mũ bảo hiểm. Angie, maybe it was the pandemic, or the SCOTUS vacancy, or the election itself, but I think at some point all of us wished we could go back. Back to the life of venti non-fat lattes, weekly manicures, designer dresses, public transportation. That's what my life was. I had a stylish apartment in downtown New Orleans that was way overpriced but worth it. I woke up at the same time every day to go to the gym then styled my long blonde hair perfectly. Then I picked out the perfect outfit, walked to Starbucks. Then across the to the bank where I worked as a loan officer. I loved my job. It was all organized and orderly and my office had the perfect design aesthetic. It was like clockwork and I loved my life. Until everything changed, it was election day, so I wore a fitted white dress and red heels. I did my civic duty by voting and posted a selfie to Instagram with the I voted sticker. Of course, I voted for Trump, I wanted my money in my bank account, where it belonged, not going to outrageously high taxes. The office was buzzing with excitement, we didn't get much work done, I remember thinking we could make up for it tomorrow. That's funny, now. I checked the exit polls and it appeared Trump was winning and by a landslide. 
I started to leave the office when I heard a distant booming sound. It made me take pause, I asked a colleague, did you hear that? Hear what? She said, oh, nothing, I thought I heard something, I said, with a dismissive wave, I walked toward the elevators when I didn't just hear an explosion. I felt it. The whole building rocked and alarms started going off. I pressed the button repeatedly, hoping it would come quicker, but the elevators stopped when the alarms went off. I knew if I could get to the west side of the building there was a rarely used stairwell that was more accessible, so I ran the opposite way of the crowd, hearing booms, screaming, and shattering glass. Is this a terrorist attack? I wondered as I sprinted to the door, I ran down the stairs but when I got to the second floor I met with a group of people. Maybe looters, flying up the stairs and holding guns, screaming. One of them swung their rifle at my face while running by, knocking me to my knees where I could see droplets of blood falling from my face. I lifted a shaky hand to assess the damage, I couldn't tell how badly I was hurt but I knew I needed to get out. I got to my feet as another huge explosion rocked the building, cutting the power. I scrambled down the stairs but fell again as I reached the bottom. I saw people getting shot. Stealing money from the registers, it was complete chaos. From behind me I heard, here, come with me. I turned around, crying, and saw a tall black man wearing cargo pants and a fitted black t-shirt. He had on a backwards cap with a rifle slung across his chest. He did not look like a safe person, but I had no choice, so I took his hand. We ran out a back door and I cried, what is going on? He didn't answer, he was looking around desperately then pulled on my hand again. Aha! Yes! He said. Eyeing a motorcycle, no, I said firmly. I'm not getting on that. This was all too much. Just then, the Starbucks I went to every morning burst into flames, the man rolled his eyes and handed me a helmet. I put it on quickly and climbed on. I wrapped my arms around his waist and he revved up the bike and tore down the street at a terrifying pace. It looked like the entire city was burning and all the residents were hell-bent on destruction. We made it out of city limits and into a quiet suburb and I climbed off the bike and fell to the ground crying. What happened? I asked, sniffing, I think the election was the tipping point, people on both sides were so scared of the other side winning that they just started fighting it out. I'm not really sure, but that's what it looked like to me, he said. He had a soothing deep voice, I thought maybe he was a safe person after all. I mean, he did get me out of the city, where are we going to go? I asked. The suburb looked deserted, I have a place a little north of here, we might be able to ride this out. He assumed I would go with him. That's pretty bold, oh, and you just assume I'm coming? I said defiantly, he laughed for a moment. Really? I saved your life back there. If you want to try to walk on home in your heels go for it but I'm doing you a favor, princess. Princess? Excuse me, I started, raising a manicured finger, but he pulled me to the ground and whipped his weapon up firing three quick rounds. I saw a man across the street lying face down on a well-maintained lawn. Holding a pistol. Okay, now we can go. If you choose, your highness, he said sarcastically. I sighed and pulled the helmet on. What choice did I have, we headed south. Entire neighborhoods were on fire, it was complete anarchy. We pulled up to the lake, where he parked. We'll have to walk from here. This coup. Angie, maybe it was the pandemic, or the SCOTUS vacancy, or the election itself, but I think at some point all of us wished we could go back. Back to the life of venti non-fat lattes, weekly manicures, designer dresses, public transportation. That's what my life was. I had a stylish apartment in downtown New Orleans that was way overpriced but worth it. I woke up at the same time every day to go to the gym then styled my long blonde hair perfectly. Then I picked out the perfect outfit, walked to Starbucks. Then across the to the bank where I worked as a loan officer. I loved my job, it was all organized and orderly and my office had the perfect design aesthetic. It was like clockwork and I loved my life. Until everything changed, it was election day, so I wore a fitted white dress and red heels. 
I did my civic duty by voting and posted a selfie to Instagram with the I voted sticker. Of course, I voted for Trump, I wanted my money in my bank account, where it belonged, not going to outrageously high taxes. The office was buzzing with excitement, we didn't get much work done, I remember thinking we could make up for it tomorrow. That's funny, now. I checked the exit polls and it appeared Trump was winning and by a landslide. I started to leave the office when I heard a distant booming sound. It made me take pause, I asked a colleague, did you hear that? Hear what? She said, oh, nothing, I thought I heard something, I said, with a dismissive wave, I walked toward the elevators when I didn't just hear an explosion. I felt it. The whole building rocked and alarms started going off. I pressed the button repeatedly, hoping it would come quicker, but the elevator stopped when the alarms went off. I knew if I could get to the west side of the building there was a rarely used stairwell that was more accessible, so I ran the opposite way of the crowd, hearing booms, screaming, and shattering glass. Is this a terrorist attack? I wondered as I sprinted to the door, I ran down the stairs but when I got to the second floor I met with a group of people. Maybe looters, flying up the stairs and holding guns, screaming. One of them swung their rifle at my face while running by, knocking me to my knees where I could see droplets of blood falling from my face. I lifted a shaky hand to assess the damage, I couldn't tell how badly I was hurt but I knew I needed to get out. I got to my feet as another huge explosion rocked the building, cutting the power. I scrambled down the stairs but fell again as I reached the bottom. I saw people getting shot. Stealing money from the registers, it was complete chaos. From behind me I heard, here, come with me. I turned around, crying, and saw a tall black man wearing cargo pants and a fitted black t-shirt. He had on a backwards cap with a rifle slung across his chest. He did not look like a safe person, but I had no choice, so I took his hand. We ran out a back door and I cried, what is going on? He didn't answer, he was looking around desperately then pulled on my hand again. Aha! Yes! He said. Eyeing a motorcycle, no, I said firmly. I'm not getting on that. This was all too much. Just then, the Starbucks I went to every morning burst into flames, the man rolled his eyes and handed me a helmet. I put it on quickly and climbed on. I wrapped my arms around his waist and he revved up the bike and tore down the street at a terrifying pace. It looked like the entire city was burning and all the residents were hell-bent on destruction. We made it out of city limits and into a quiet suburb and I climbed off the bike and fell to the ground crying. What happened? I asked, sniffing, I think the election was the tipping point, people on both sides were so scared of the other side winning that they just started fighting it out. I'm not really sure, but that's what it looked like to me, he said. He had a soothing deep voice, I thought maybe he was a safe person after all. I mean, he did get me out of the city, where are we going to go? I asked. The suburb looked deserted, I have a place a little north of here, we might be able to ride this out. He assumed I would go with him. That's pretty bold, oh, and you just assume I'm coming? I said defiantly, he laughed for a moment. Really? I saved your life back there. If you want to try to walk on home in your heels go for it but I'm doing you a favor, princess. Princess? Excuse me, I started, raising a manicured finger, but he pulled me to the ground and whipped his weapon up firing three quick rounds. I saw a man across the street lying face down on a well-maintained lawn. Holding a pistol. Okay, now we can go. If you choose, your highness, he said sarcastically. I sighed and pulled the helmet on. What choice did I have, we headed south. Entire neighborhoods were on fire, it was complete anarchy. We pulled up to the lake, where he parked. We'll have to walk from here. This coup.